Hi, I'm Jeffrey Knight with Ewing Irrigation, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use an ohm meter to troubleshoot electrical problems with sprinkler systems. Joining me today is Dennis Hyde with Ewing Irrigation. Dennis, have you ever used an ohm meter to troubleshoot a sprinkler system? A, a few times. A few times, okay, that's what I thought. Now, what, what we're going to do is this meter will send us a uh, signal down the wire, and it's going to measure how much resistance is met in the wire. And the unit of resistance is, is ohms, so that's why um, we're going to talk about ohming out a system. And the great thing about a sprinkler system is that all the electric valves have these solenoids on them, and they have a resistance reading between 20 and 60 ohms. So if we know that, we, we're home free as, for, as far as troubleshooting goes. All we have to do now is hook our meter up to the common wire and the station wire. If we get 20 to 60 ohms, then we know that the field wire is good and the solenoid is good. So it's not an electrical problem with the valve. And how would we know if it's open? Well, if it's an open, then what you'll see, the meter might say OL or it might say over 200 ohms. Anything over 200 ohms means that we have a potential break. And that's what, is, uh, that's what an open is. And what if it was less than 20? Less than 20, it's got to be less than 10. Um, if it's less than 10 ohms, what's happening is that the signal's not making its way through the entire coil. It's taking a shortcut. And that's what is meant when we say that a system has a short. And that pulls too many amps and it'll trip breakers and all kinds of stuff. So let's, uh, let's home out this timer now. We're going to take one of the leads and connect it to the, station, uh, to the common post with the wire there. And let's go to station one, see what we get. Okay. We got 59 ohms of resistance. We were looking for something between 20 and 60, so we know that's a good station. Let's go to station two. We have 58 ohms of resistance there, so we know station two is good. But station three is the one they were complaining about, so let's look at it. Okay, on station three, the meter says OL. That means we have an open line. So we have a break on station three somewhere. What we don't know is if it's in the field wire or if it's in the valve itself. So our next step is to go into the field and we're going to ohm out the actual solenoid. And that will let us know if, this, if the break is in the field wire or in the solenoid. We're in the field at the valve and I've disconnected the field wires from the actual solenoid. And these two black leads right here go to the solenoid itself. And so we're going to ohm this out. And Dennis, when we do this, what reading are we hoping to see here? Well, I want to say between 20 and 60. If we got 20 to 60, um, that would be a good solenoid, right? Right. But is that really good for us? No, because if it's 20 between 20 and 60 here, that means our break is between the controller and the valve. That's right. Which is so much more difficult to Th find. That's a lot harder. Okay, so if we had an open line at the clock, we really want to see an open line here at the solenoid. That's the easiest fix of the day. If it does get between 20 and 60, that means the break is in the field wire. So let's ohm this out and see what we get. That's a good solenoid, and that's bad news for us. Get your shovel. Get your shovel out. An ohm meter is a must-have in your irrigation troubleshooting toolbox, and it'll be used to diagnose a majority of your electrical problems. I'm Jeffrey Knight, and I'll see you again soon with another troubleshooting video.